So having seen the definition of a wide sense stationary process, I'm going to start now giving you some examples, finding what the power spectral density is, and also finding out when a random process is wide sense stationary or not. So let's start looking at some examples. So let's start with a sinusoid whose phase is random, and it's a random variable. Okay, so I have theta here, which is a random variable. Now I'm going to describe this process, which is a function of time. Uh, so it's a time, which is uh, identified here. So in this expression for the sinusoid, the amplitude is constant in A. Uh, the carrier frequency, Fc, is constant. Of course, this function is sinusoidal. It varies with time, and there's some phase which gives it the randomness in it. Um, so um, the phase is random. The amplitude is constant. And I'm going to give you another example in, in a minute that looks similar. But right now, the important thing to realize is A is a deterministic and constant, and phi is a random variable. So first thing I want to do is, is this a wide sense stationary process? So in order to answer that question, is this process wide sense stationary, I have to establish two things. First of all, what is the mean, and is it constant in time? And what is the autocorrelation function? Is it a function only of the time lag? So let's go through the calculations and see. So we'll start with the uh, mean of this random process. By definition, ux of t is the expected value of x of t. Here is my x of t, so um, I'm going to be putting that in uh, for x, and then of course, it depends on what the density is for this uh, random phase. So uh, I put in right away that this is the uh, random process. Uh, so I replace x of t with this function in time. And I'm going to take this function, and I have to uh, weight it by the probability density function. So what is it that's random in this uh, random process. Well, there's only one part of it that's random, and that's this theta, this uh, phase offset. So I have a density for theta. I haven't specified what it is yet, but as long as I spe uh, specify what that density is, then I can find uh, the average uh, value of this function of time. So I'm going to assume that the uh, theta is uniformly distributed between 0 and 2 pi. That means that um, f of theta is 1 over 2 pi, and it's only non-zero in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm saying that uh, theta is uniformly distributed over 0 to pi. I'm sorry, pi. <laughs> or another way to say that is f theta of theta, and I guess this should be a nice theta, is equal to 1 over 2 pi between 0 and 2 pi, and it's 0 everywhere else. So now I've put that into my expression for finding the mean. So I just have to uh, evaluate uh, this integral. So in this uh, case, I could um, use trigonometric properties, and I know that the uh, cosine uh, integral is sine, evaluated at 0 and 2 pi, and I'm going to get the exact same thing, and therefore the difference between them is going to give me mean of 0. And of course mean of 0 for all time, because it doesn't matter what time this is, that means that it's constant in time. And so I've established the first property of a wide sense stationary process. But now to make sure it's wide sense stationary, I have to move on to the second property. So for the second property, I have to look at the autocorrelation function. And the definition of the autocorrelation function is I take the expected value and I take the product of this random process at two different in uh, instants of time. So in the first case, I evaluate it at time 1. Second time, I evaluate it at time 2. So I have to evaluate the expected value of this product. So expected value, that means minus from infinity to infinity of the um, averaged over the density function. And here, of course, it's the same. But for this uh, density function, I know it's 1 over 2 pi, and it reduces the minus infinity to infinity to just the interval 0, 2 pi, just like we saw when we were calculating the mean value. And so now, uh, of course, the a's are not uh, random. They, they're not depending on theta, so I can pull it out of the integral of d theta. And what I have here is a product of cosines. So the product of cosines, I can use a trigonometric relationship to say that that is the same thing as the sum 
of two cosines. And in the first cosine, I have the difference of the argument. And in the second one, I have the sum of the arguments. So using this property, I guess I could write it over here, the cosine of um, alpha times the cosine of beta is just the cosine of alpha minus beta plus the cosine of alpha plus beta. So when I have the minus, what happens? Well, I have t1 minus t2, and I have theta minus theta, but theta minus theta is 0. So this ends up being just 2 pi fc t1 minus t2. And here I have something where I have the sum. So now I have two different integrals, uh, a sum of two integrals. And so I can uh, evaluate each one in the sum separately. So let's look at the integral of this cosine. Well, first of all, um, there's no theta in this cosine. <laughs> so there's no theta in this cosine, so I can actually bring it outside of the integral. And so what does the integral give me? The integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta? Well, it gives me 2 pi. So this part of the integral is just the cosine of 2 pi fc times the difference t1 minus t2 times 2 pi. Now let's look at that second integral. Here I had the cosine of uh, 2 theta plus something. Now if I look at the integral of that cosine, well it'll be a sine, and I'm going to evaluate that sine between 0 and 2 pi, and when I put in 0 for theta, and if I put in 2 pi, it's going to be plus 4 pi, and I, sub and I subtract them, well they're going to be the exact same thing during the periodicity of the sin sinusoid function. Therefore that's going to give me 0. So at the end of this calculation, I get that the autocorrelation function is just a squared over 2, because I multiply by that 2 pi, and I have cosine of 2 pi fc times the difference t1 minus t2. So the only place that t1 and t2 uh, appear in this expression is in their difference. Therefore, I can say that I can give a name to that difference. I'm going to call that difference t1 minus t2. I'm going to call that tau. And so essentially, this autocorrelation function is only a function of the lag tau. So I have established that it is indeed a wide sense stationary process. So the first criteria was that it was uh, a constant in time, and we saw it was zero. Second criteria was a function only of the lag, and that was indeed uh, what we found. Now I'm going to give you a counterexample. I'm going to give you an example where it is not a wide sense stationary uh, process. And what's funny is I'm going to start with what looks like exactly the same process. It's still going to be a, sin a sinusoid, but the part that's going to be random now is no longer the phase. Instead of the phase, I'm going to make it the amplitude. So now the phase is constant, and the amplitude is random. So I've sort of switched things around. So the theta is a constant, fc is a constant, a is a random process. So in this uh, newly uh, generated example, let's find out uh, how we're going to establish that it's not white and stationary. So the first step, find the expected value. The expected value is just the expected value of x of t. We have here the expected value of the product a times a cosine. We know that in the cosine, there's nothing that's random, right? This is all not random. The only part that's random is a. So really, it's the expected value of a, the only part that's random, times this deterministic value, which is the cosine of 2 pi fc plus uh, t plus theta. Now, I'm not even going to tell you what the distribution of a is, but I do know that it's going to have a mean. So whatever the mean is, it's going to be that mean of a times a cosine. So is this constant? Well, I can think of one case where it's going to be constant, and that's when that mean is 0. So it's possible. Suppose that a happens to be a um, pro, uh, happens to have a PDF which is zero mean. So it's not constant in time unless that u of a is zero. Now, let's say that it was zero mean. And so if it was zero mean, then maybe I could consider it constant in time. It would be constant in time. So now I'm going to have to look at the autocorrelation function. So autocorrelation function is, by definition, the product of these two. Again, I put in my function here. And again, the cosine is not at all 
random. It's completely deterministic. So that is not part of the expectation. The only part that I have in the expectation operator is a squared. So that represents, let me see, if I said, so if I said the UA, the mean of A is zero, that means that the expected value of A squared is equal to the variance of A, right? Variance is always non-zero. This is always non-zero. And since it's always non-zero, that means that in this case, it really is not a function of the difference because it's a product of um, uh, T1, cosine of T1 times T2. Even if I use one of those trigonometric functions, uh, I would get one with, which was the difference, F1 minus F2, but I'd also get a term which was the function of F, of uh, cosine of T1 plus T2. And so this one is just not white sense stationary because it's not a function only of the difference.